Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Motofab 3 inch front, 2 inch rear leveling kit fitting all 09 and newer 4 wheel drive Ram 1500s without air ride. You should be checking out this kit if you're interested in three things, reducing the factory rake while lifting your front and rear of the truck, fitting larger wheels and tires on your truck up to 35 inches, and getting additional ground clearance up front to help with some light off-roading situations. First and foremost, fitting larger wheels and tires on your Ram isn't too hard. Off the factory line, this generation Ram comes with anywhere from 30 30 inch up to 33 inch all season tires. Ours has factory 33s. If you're looking to fit up to 35s comfortably, then you'll need a leveling kit like this one. The rear is no problem, but three inches is more than enough up front to help with 35s without modification. Now with some of the more aggressive mud terrain tires, you may experience some slight rubbing at full turn depending on your wheel offset, but fitting up to 35s is definitely doable as you can see on our 14 Ram here. Now when it comes to leveling out your truck's appearance by reducing the factory rake, three inch front and two inch rear leveling kit like this one from Motofab makes it super easy. If you're not familiar with the term rake, just know that it basically refers to your truck's front end sitting lower than the rear in order to help with towing and hauling. Now this is still the case here, but you're bringing up the front end a bit more than the rear, which levels it out a bit more. Getting additional ground clearance is easily attainable with a leveling kit as well. Since you're lifting the entire truck up a couple of inches, you'll be able to drive right on over some of the smaller obstacles that you may otherwise come in contact with at the front or the rear. The stock front bumper and lip sits pretty low, so any additional height can make the difference with those smaller hazards on and off-road. Now this particular kit from Motofab is CNC machined from aircraft grade billet aluminum and has a black powder coated finish on top to help with corrosion and oxidization resistance. Keep in mind that the physical front spacer here measures in at right around two inches, but with the change in suspension geometry and spring compression, you'll achieve the final lift height of three inches. The rear spacer is true to size at two inches. The price for this kit comes in right around hundred bucks. It's a super affordable mod that makes a big difference in appearance and fitment for your truck. Because three inches is a larger front leveling kit size, your suspension geometry is changing a bit, so you may want to consider upgrading your upper control arms to prevent long-term wear on your factory ball joints. The installation for this leveling kit comes in at two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. You don't need a spring compressor or any big specialty tools like that because the spacer sits right at the top of your factory front strut. No need to disassemble it. It'll take about two, maybe three hours from start to finish to knock out both sides. Keep in mind, you'll need to get an alignment once everything is said and done, and be sure to torque down all the bolts back to factory spec if you're tackling it yourself. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process, so let's get started. Tools used in the install include an air gun and an impact gun, quarter inch ratchet, eight 16, 17, 21, and 15 16 deep sockets, 13 millimeter swivel socket is recommended, eight millimeter hex socket or Allen key, hammer and a pry bar of various lengths, flathead, handy panel removal tool, 15 and 18 millimeter ratcheting wrenches and a 21 millimeter wrench. All right, to kick things off, I'm gonna show you guys how to uninstall your factory strut here on our front driver's side. Now, of course, you wanna get your wheel out of the way. That's step number one. We're supported on a lift, but if you're working on the floor, make sure you have a floor jack properly supporting the weight of the vehicle. Moving on from there, we'll have to disconnect the ABS lines from the knuckle and from the brake line itself, just to make sure that when the knuckle drops down out of the upper control arm, we're not putting too much stress on those brake lines. All right, so for this ABS line, just follow it down to the back of your knuckle here. That's connected with a plastic clip. Just gonna wiggle that back and forth till it pops up. Now you wanna follow that guy up to the top here. That's connected to your brake line. That you're just gonna pull apart just like that. Now we have more slack on our brake line, so we're not putting tension on them. Next up, grab a 16 millimeter deep socket and we're gonna remove the factory nut off of our sway bar end link. All right, set that aside. All right, next up, we're gonna disconnect our tie rod end. Now, before we get started, you wanna know that this is a 21 millimeter nut. Now, in some cases, if you use an impact gun on this, the entire stud will spin in that ball joint. You may need a 10 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench to get the nut off while holding that stud steady. For our first time, I'm gonna use our 21 millimeter deep socket in my air gun to get this guy off. All right, so ours didn't give us any trouble, but that is still worth noting. Now, before I take this guy out, I'm actually gonna leave it in and just put that nut a couple of threads on just to keep the entire hub assembly from rotating while tackling the upper control arm. All right, so next we're gonna do the upper control arm to the knuckle. Now, Ram uses a castle nut here, which has these open gaps all the way around, and through one of the gaps going through the stud itself is a metal retaining pin. We're gonna use needle nose pliers to pull that pin straight out. All right, set that aside. Now for this, I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I highly recommend picking up a set of ratcheting wrenches for this install. There's a lot of different aspects of this that ratcheting wrenches will be a lot easier to use. 
All right, so once we broke that loose, I can back this off with my hand. Now, a big thing to remember is we have to dislodge the ball joint from the knuckle. You can see that this stud didn't break free with that. So I'm gonna leave this nut on a couple of threads. We're gonna grab our hammer and we're gonna swing and tap against here to dislodge that. And then we'll use a pry bar to pull it down and take our nut off. Now for this, you wanna grab a ball peen hammer and we're gonna tap right up against the side here of the knuckle. With that dislodged, you'll see that the upper control arm moves freely in there. Let's take our nut off. Once you have the castle nut and spacer out, set those aside. All right, so from here, we can go back to the tie rod end, take that nut off, lift the tie rod end out. And I like to hang it up over that sway bar and link, and then put our nut back on the stud just so we don't lose it. Here we can lift the upper control arm out of the knuckle. And what I like to do is just grab the upper control arm castle nut and thread it right back on again so we don't lose it, just like the tie rod end. All right, next up, we're gonna tackle the bottom strut bolt, holding it to the lower control arm. Now, the nut here, I'm gonna use a 15 16 deep socket on my impact gun, and I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt head on the inside. At this point, you can grab a ball peen hammer and just tap the end of that to pop it through. Some cases, you may be able to pull it straight out, if not, you can grab a flathead screwdriver and just stick it in there and hammer the back end of that. All right, so now we can focus on the top three strut tower nuts. Now grab a 15 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna use again the 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Again, this really comes in handy. We're gonna loosen up these three top nuts. All right, so now our strut is free. I'm gonna use a pry bar here between the lower control arm and the strut body at the bottom to pry this guy out of position. All right, so now we can assemble our spacer with the new studs. So these studs are gonna hold the entire strut assembly and the spacer to the truck, and the factory studs will hold the spacer to the strut. So at this point, you wanna flip it so you can see these threads, then turn it over so the threads are on the bottom. In the larger holes that you see, basically what you want to do is thread in these new studs. So they're going to go from the bottom going up, and I'm just going to thread in just a couple of threads on each one. All right, so now what you want to do once you have all three of these guys in, and it's worth noting here that if you think this is going to be a more permanent mod, a little blue Loctite on those threads can go a long way. We're going to be taking ours off, so I'm going to skip that, but it is recommended. Grab an 8 millimeter hex socket or an Allen key and tighten these three down. All right, so now we can throw this on top of our strut. Now we can basically take the spacer and set it on top of our strut. Now it only drops onto the studs one way, so you just can keep rotating it until it lines up and it'll drop on just like that. The new nuts included in the kit will hold the whole assembly to the truck. Grab the factory nuts, and I'm basically gonna drop it into the hole on top of the factory studs, and I'm gonna use this 15 deep socket just by hand to thread it on a couple of threads so we don't cross thread it. Drop the nuts on each one of the studs. Now we can take our impact gun, and I'm just gonna swap out this socket for the 15 and tighten these three down. So now we can install this back into our truck. So now I'm just gonna take one of the nuts included in the kit and place it on top of the upper control arm for easy access. Line up those top studs and put it in the truck. Once you have it all the way through, I'm just gonna use one nut 
to hold this guy in place at the top. You really only need one for now. All right, so while that holds it in, we can reassemble everything else. All right, now before we put everything back together, it may be helpful to take the top of the sway bar end link nut off along with the bushing and bracket there, or the spacer. And we're just gonna set that aside. It'll give us more articulation in the lower control arm. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna lift that tie rod end out of the way so you can see. We basically need to get this fork on the bottom of the strut over the lower control arm to seat where those open holes are. I recommend using a pry bar. I think it's gonna be one of your easier ways to get this done. You're basically just gonna lift up and pry down so that it seats correctly on the lower control arm. All right, so the next part is to get the factory bolt back through the bottom of the strut. Bolt head's gonna be on the inside facing out like that. Uh, this gets to be pretty tricky getting the bolt holes to line up, so you might want to grab a smaller pry bar and you're basically going to lift up until the hole on the inside lines up so you can get that bolt through. All right, so I got a helping hand here. We're going to put the bolt in the opposite way it came out to help line it up. Grab a hammer and tap it through. All right, now I know getting that bolt back in is a lot of a problem. It can give you a little bit of a headache here trying to get it back in the same way it came out. So if you need to, you can flip the bolt around and put the bolt head on the front of the vehicle side going into the inside of the lower control arm. There's no problem doing that, doesn't make a difference. So that's what we did there just to get it to line up better. Grab your hammer and tap it all the way through. All right, so now we can put our nut back on the other side here. Grab your 15 16 wrench for the nut and your 21 socket for the bolt head and tighten them down. All right, let's reconnect our tie rod in. So I'm gonna take off that factory nut that I put on there for safekeeping, lift up your knuckle, and drop that guy into place. Thread the factory nut back on. All right, grab your 21 socket and tighten down that nut. Now for the next step of getting our upper control arm to seat in our knuckle, I actually lowered the truck down toward the ground and I'm using a floor jack, a hydraulic floor jack, to jack up the lower control arm so it brings the knuckle up to meet the upper control arm halfway. Otherwise, the knuckle assembly there is a little bit too low. We can't extend the upper control arm down far enough, so jacking it up allows us to seat it in. So that's what I just did here. So at this point, I'm gonna use my pry bar to pry down on the upper control arm, seat the stud through this hole, and then put the nut back on. All right, so I'm again gonna put my pry bar under one of the coil springs. Seat this guy in just like this. You wanna be careful not to slip off of that coil. So the studs come through the bottom, grab the nut and the spacer assembly that was on there from the factory and thread that nut on. We wanna get it on a couple of threads there, a good amount of thread so it can't pop off. That'll hold itself on. Now at this point, we can grab our socket and tighten this guy down while prying down on this so we can release some of that tension. So I'm gonna use my swivel socket and my 18 to go up here. Now you can just use a typical ratcheting socket set. You can use a ratcheting wrench if that's easier for you. Um, but I have this air tool, so I'm gonna find this to be a little bit easier. I'm gonna pry down a little bit and tighten it down. There it is. So now once you have that in place, the last step is to grab the retaining pin and put that through. All right, so while we're down here and this is jacked up, we have our sway bar end link back through the sway bar. Drop your bushing back on in the spacer, follow it up with the 16 nut. Grab your socket set, grab your 16 socket and tighten that down. Again, I'm using a swivel to make it easier. All right, now this last step's a little bit more difficult to see because the um, inner wheel well liner is here, but you wanna make sure you're putting all three nuts on all three studs. We already had one on the front, so we just gotta hit those back two. And then from here, you're gonna grab a 17 socket or a ratchet and tighten these three down. For these, I like to use a ratcheting wrench. I find it to be easier because this one's a little bit longer. I get a little bit more leverage. All right, kicking off the uninstall for the rear here. First off, I have two pole jacks supporting the rear axle. 
we're gonna start by disconnecting the bottom of our rear sway bar end link. Now, the end link connects it to the frame as well, but you wanna do it on the sway bar side. It makes life a lot easier. Now, grab an 18 millimeter uh, ratcheting wrench, which is what I recommend. I'm gonna put that over the nut here. Now, the reason we're doing a ratcheting wrench is number one, it's gonna make life easier, but number two is because it's a good idea to grab an eight millimeter socket and hold the end of that stud. Otherwise, it's just gonna spin in that ball joint. So this way we can hold it steady and we can crack this guy loose. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is basically take the end link out and I'm gonna put that nut back on just for safekeeping. Now pretty much everything that you do to one side, you're pretty much gonna repeat on the other. You have to do it simultaneously. So do this on the other side and then we'll move forward. All right, next up, we gotta disconnect our panhard bar. Now this is the bar right here. One end is connected to the axle, the other end is connected to the frame. We only have to disconnect one side, so I'm gonna do it here at the frame. Grab a 21 millimeter deep socket. There's a nut on the other side that has a tab on it, so we don't really need to hold the nut, it'll hold itself. So let's get this guy off. So that's disconnected. Grab that nut from the back put them together so we don't lose it and set it aside. All right, next up is the bottom of our shock. I'm doing this again on our driver's side. You're gonna have to repeat this on the passenger as well. Grab a 21 millimeter deep socket along with the 21 ratchet or wrench and get this bolt off. All right, again, at this point, it's very crucial you have a jack stand, hydraulic floor jack, or a pole jack holding your rear axle up because this is the last piece on this side holding this up. And you wanna make sure you're supporting this compression of the spring. So I just jacked up on it a little bit to relieve the pressure from this bolt so we can pull it out. All right, so at this point, you can see we have two pole jacks supporting each side of our rear axle. We have the springs basically being held up by just these pole jacks. We're gonna start lowering these pole jacks one at a time to slowly decompress our spring. The springs are under a lot of tension, so you don't wanna do this too quickly. You wanna go slow, just so we can relieve that tension there. And once the tension is relieved and the spring is free, we'll be able to lift it up, put our spring spacer in, and then start putting everything back together. All right, so the spring is loose on the driver's side. Spring is loose on the passenger side, so now we can start slipping our spring spacers in. All right, so at this point, you're basically gonna lift up on the spring, pull it out of the perch, and put your spacer at the bottom of it. Now to do this, you're gonna have to pull down on the whole axle assembly. It may make your life easier to disconnect the bolt at the top of this brake line if you need more slack. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, once your spacer's in place, we just have to jack everything back up into position and re-bolt down all of the components, the sway bar end link, the shock itself, and the panhard bar. So this is something, again, you wanna be very careful about because you're putting a lot of tension back on the spring, so you don't wanna go too fast. You also wanna make sure the spring is seated completely properly at the top and on the bottom. So just make sure it's in the ring up there, which it looks like it is on both sides. We're doing this simultaneously again. And then start jacking it up until the shock matches up with the, the axle uh, mounting holes. So you just wanna make sure you're jacking it up far enough for that to happen. All right, now when you're jacking up the rear axle, you, this is what you're looking for, the shock. The shock is the highest point off once it's fully lowered. So when you're jacking it back up, you wanna make sure you're lining this bolt hole up. Of course, if you need to, you can grab a hammer and tap that in. All right, got this nut on there. You wanna make sure you're getting both sides aligned so that you can tighten down both shocks. Grab your 21 socketed wrench and tighten that down. All right, so now we're gonna reconnect our panhard bar. Drop that guy into place, making sure it's lined up. And if it's not, you can sort of manipulate the axle to go one way or the other. And again, once you get it in there, if you need to, you can grab a hammer and tap it through. Grab that nut and put it on the backside. Grab your 21 socket and tighten it down. 
All right, so really the last steps here are reconnecting our sway bar end link. Now, once again, you have both sides disconnected. It moves a little bit more freely. So you wanna bring the end link over and connect it there. Put the nut back on, thread it on as far as you can by hand. And then you're grabbing your 18 socket. And again, I'm using a ratcheting wrench along with an eight millimeter socket to hold the stud and tighten it down. All right, once you tighten up the other side, you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the Motofab three inch front, two inch rear leveling kit available for the 09 and newer Ram 1500 without air ride. You can get yours right here at americantrucks.com.